Hey everyone, welcome back to another video. In this video, I'm going to be talking about my story. When I first decided to get healthy until my fitness phase and then afterwards. So over the span of three years, yeah, three years, I am going to be showing photos. So if you're triggered by that stuff, then please click off this video. It all started in, yeah, early 2020. Um, I was happy. I was a happy person. I was, how old was I? I was around 13, 13 then. And um, I don't know what exactly got me to start going on a diet, but I just felt like I needed to be healthier. And truth be told, I was being pretty unhealthy then. Like I barely did any exercise. Um, I was a bit of a homebody, like I still am right now and I ate lots of sugar, but you know, it was a fun time. I don't regret it. Sorry, I'll try not to move around. And so yeah, my mom found this plan for me to get healthier. So she was making everything for me. Um, you know, I can't cook. Well, I couldn't cook then and I still can't now. And I was fine. I didn't have any body image issues. I mean, I was always sort of insecure about myself. Like sometimes people would make, mostly family would make comments about how I look and my size, but I wouldn't say that they were the cause of this. Um, I just felt like I needed to. I remember I downloaded this app. I don't know what it's called, but it's like a workout for women app or something. It's looking back now, it's just really bad. Like you do exercises like this to get, you know, yeah. Not a lot of results came from that. I was trying to be, I remember I was trying to be like the fittest person in the family. And then I didn't, I wasn't consistent. So I wasn't really committed. Didn't matter a whole lot to me. It was just, you know how we go through phases. So yeah, that was that. And then I started losing weight and steadily. And I was really proud of myself and my family were proud of me. Um, and then in like November 2020, I started going to the gym for the first time. Um, that's when my mom was started to worry about me but I was like no there's no need to worry it's fine it's fine I was like so adamant that to go to the gym and yeah I remember we drove around like to multiple different places just to find the right gym I don't know what was going through my head then but I just so keen on going I think it was because I spent a lot of time on like Instagram so I was very keen becoming fit myself did workouts in the backyard yoga and yeah then I started going to the gym and I went there for about a year lifting weights so when I started getting into weights first I started terribly <laughs> I used to post out post-workout videos and then people would just point out how bad my form was and yes it was bad and I would come in like the least aerodynamic clothes like jumper sweater casual shorts I looked like very incongruous there um but it was I can't really remember my state of mind then I think it was like just a hobby not a serious passion but then I started getting more and more serious and briefly I had a coach train me like once or twice he was really nice, but um, that's kind of when my OCD started kicking in. I mean, I haven't been formally diagnosed, but I have seen a psychiatrist that's given medication to help me OCD tendencies. So I'm not formally diagnosed, don't want to self-diagnose, but I do, I am on that path, if that makes sense. Anyway, like everything just had to be perfect. Like I had to work out for one hour straight. If I worked out for a little bit less, then it was terrible and I wasn't going to make any progress. Like stuff like that, like just the little niceties and um just trifling that I fretted over constantly and um there was also a specific number of days I had to go a week go a week so it was like four days was the best number um but I aspired to do five days always wearing these like crop tops I look terrible I was li I wider than I am now and so it wasn't ideal and I remember being really rigid with my eating I would always track my calories and my macronutrients too and it, yeah very structured inflexible lifestyle that I do not miss at all like, I'm so much happier now that I don't have to deal all the that rigidity and actually here I have this diary that I wrote September to December 2020 and it's basically this was in the midst of lockdown I've got to say as you know so I you know everyone was bored everyone like just had to find interests had to take interest in little things and so a lot of these entries are quite boring because a lot of it's just food um weight loss movies working out and just basically stream of consciousness thoughts that i do not a lot of it is just cringe worthy see this is why i hate writing a diary because i just go on these huge tangents and none of it is and books 
which isn't so bad. I remember I used to read three books at the same time. That was crazy. Um, so yeah, my life was pretty sad back then. It wasn't, let's just say the past three years been pretty trash for me. Um, yeah, anyway, moving on. So now we're in 2021. I'm still going to the same gym. Um, remember I got gym clothes for my birthday because that's all. So it literally became my personality. And then in December, oh yeah, I remember, yeah, in December that year, my body image was getting progressively worse. And when we moved to Queensland, it got even more worse. I went to, I started going to a new gym, same people. I think it's City Fitness, yeah. And you know how it involves a lot of mirrors everywhere? Like, yeah, my brain couldn't handle that. Like, I just couldn't, like, make, looking at myself just made me feel very sick. Well, not very sick, but it did. Um, and actually, my previous house that was in Melbourne, because I used to live in Melbourne, there were mirrors everywhere. So it made my life a living hell. Anyway, so yeah, I went to this new gym um, and just my main insecurity wasn't so much being curvy or like booty or anything. It was my knees. It's always been pretty. It's a really weird insecurity. So that's why I'm even more insecure about telling people because weird. And like, who cares about their knee? What about your stomach? Yeah, I didn't care about my stomach. I had like abs, but anyway, <laughs> I mean, I don't anymore, but um, it was my knees because they had this, I don't know how to explain because it's weird. I like, I used to sit on the floor, like on my knees, like I used to kneel on the floor all the time, but not just kneeling, like, hold on, I'll, I'll do a demonstration. I was like this. So pretend my chair is the floor. I do this. So my knees would get pressed into the carpet and made discolored it. Like it went through a lot, my knees went, have gone through a lot of phases. At one stage when I was like in 2017, they were like sandpaper, literal sandpaper. Skin would flake off, it was gross. And then after I started going to the gym, it turned like dark red, <laughs> like a dark reddish color. And you can see on photos, like it looks like I have huge bruises on my knees. Anyway, I was so insecure about it. And that's basically what triggered my first ED um, was my knees, that insecurity surrounding. So yeah, I know it's a weird thing to hear about, but that's literally it. That's what, that's what triggered me so badly. Like. I couldn't bear to see photos of myself because of my knees. They were so discolored. And I tried to put it applying creams, moisturizer. I tried one of those exfoliating brushes called. I forgot what they were called, but I used those. Nothing would work. Um, so I thought they would just go away if I restricted. And yeah, that's basically it. Um, I'm not gonna, definitely not gonna say describe my behaviors exactly, but it just wasn't a fun time for me. I mean, I was ecstatic at the start because I was, I'm finally gonna change and not be insecure anymore. But the truth is, like, your goal, as you may probably have, always keeps changing. Like, it's never, ever consistent. It's always this, and then when you reach this way, you, you want to reach another way, and you think you never, it's always, like, competitive. When you're in that mindset, if you can't reach your goal, then you feel really crap. And you, you're like, what have I done? Is it all for nothing? Um, oh yeah, I forgot to mention what year it was. It was, it's 2022. So 2022, that's when I started restricting for the first In Um, so yeah, I did that for about, almost four months and I didn't look great. <laughs> I looked really strange, like, because I've never looked that way before. I've always been normal way, kind of scary. Like my eyeballs seem to pop out of my skull, very unnatural. And my parents worried about me, obviously. And I started working out. My mom let me do it. I kept eating, gaining weight, and which eventually I did. And hence began my really bad fitness addiction. So I wasn't, at this point, I wasn't allowed to go to the gym. I haven't been to the gym in like two years. I basically created my own gym right in this room. Um, and some of you may remember my old, I think I still have a workout video on here. Yeah. Um, I might take that down. Um, and yeah, I basically, I mean, I did gain weight, but I was very muscular, like veiny muscular. You know, past me would have seen myself then and been like <laughs> reverberating. Um, my past self would have seen me and been like, whoa, goals. Me back then, it's like I'm not muscly enough. I'd always see some girl who's covered in like 95% of her body in. Okay, so it's like several hours later because my um, camera died. So yeah, where was I? Uh, I think it was up to, yeah, 2022 when I first started um, restricting heavily. Um, that was also the first time where I saw a therapist and I forgot to mention this, but the day I was caught, I went, um, I saw a therapist and she told me that I was in the danger zone and I had to go to the hospital. Well, actually my heart rate was pretty low, like 30, 39. <laughs> um, 
So you know what? Actually, in hindsight, it was a good idea that I went to the hospital. It was terrible. Uh, we waited there for ages, and no one really did anything. But um, so we went home. Um, so yeah, that was a lame day. And yeah, from that day forward, I was monitored by my parents. Um, and I still worked out behind in secret, and then they found out, and then they let me. Um, so yeah, I gained I gained weight, but I was muscly, as I said, and I worked out four to five times a week. Um, because it was the only way I could cope. I wasn't seeing, really seeing a therapist and I didn't, I decided I didn't like her because I just bore this grudge against her for doxing on me, I guess. And so, um, yeah, I wasn't getting help for a long time. So I just fell into bad habits and I was in denial for a lot of it. And a lot of people were commenting on this because my account blew up when I started posting these photos. My account like blew up and that sort of encouraged me to keep going and I gained validation from the attention because I'm an only child and I wouldn't say I'm a lo lonely a lot of the time but I like getting attention because I always tend to feel that I don't get attention and um, it makes me feel good about myself and I think that's with like a lot of teenagers like um, feeding off people's um, attention and validation and the problem with that is if you rely on that too much as soon as it goes away or people stop validating you then your self-esteem basically plummets um so yeah it was just a really vicious cycle and I, I relapsed actually for short periods of time because my body image was really bad despite being stronger than I ever was and having veins like it just was never enough and that's when it gets like really dangerous because when does it end you know and also it took up a lot of my time I didn't really have a lot of time to do anything and um I was really rigid around my schedule and eating so yeah it wasn't conducive to actual recovery in any way and unfortunately there are a lot of people on Instagram promote this sort of recovery like I'm not saying the gym is a bad thing but I do think it's important to take a break from it if you're gonna recover because the gym is like let's be honest it's mainly about aesthetics and looking strong and muscular it was really in reality it was a coping mechanism and basically I used it as a substitute for therapy I found it cathartic I did it when I was angry I did it when I was sad, I did it when I was sick, I just did it all the time. I hardly ever gave myself a break and yeah, I actually started seeing a nutritionist around this time and she used to say to me, you have to be eating like an athlete and I was like, okay, but I never did. I just slowly increased my intake by fixed increments and then I was getting them. I was like, oh yeah, weight gain is so easy and then when I actually gained the weight, I got discouraged and started dating myself so yeah i was not in a good headspace then um 2022 late 2022 um and then which brings me to april 2023 when i went to noosa um i felt really horrible about myself i remember saying to my mom oh my gosh there's something wrong with me there's something chemically wrong with me like i was crying and i was telling her and she's like we'll get you help and it was only like months later when i actually didn't see a psychologist but i actually saw a psychiatrist and um she helped me in a way that no other psychologist could do she gave me actual medicine tablets to help with my ocd my obsessive tendencies because when i get fixated on something even today if i get fixated on one part of my body i can't stop fixating on it it just becomes the theme of my day basically like if i don't look good in a certain lighting then that will mess me up and make me angry and make me go on an emotional roller coaster but i'm talking about when i was underweight um so at least now I'm at a healthy weight, so I think it's natural to not feel good about myself sometimes, but back then I was underweight. I was I was too lean, but I always thought I was too curvy. Like, I remember when I used to edit my videos, I'd, like my old vlog videos from back then, I'd look over them and go, oh, I look terrible. But now, when I look back on them, I actually realise that I was totally blind. So when you really grow, like when you truly grow, you look back and you go, damn, what was wrong with me? Like, was was there, was I wearing some sort of, was there a blindfold over my eyes or something? Like, it feels really strange. Um, yeah, I find it a bit sad too, 
like thinking that you're fat when you're really not like when you're the opposite um and i wish i could just give my pal self a hug and just say you are fine the way you are back then waking wasn't an option for me like i would feel like almost really dizzy because i wouldn't let myself i wouldn't nourish myself properly because i thought I didn't need it when I actually did. Like we'd go on these long hikes and I just felt like, oh, I don't need that. Oh, I don't need this. I resorted to watermelons. Yep, watermelon. I mean, watermelon's not that bad. It's just, well, first of all, it's really juicy and it gets everywhere. Second of all, it doesn't fill you up at all. Um, so yeah, I was, I was not in a good place then. And then it was my birthday, which probably the second worst birthday I've ever had. My worst birthday was last year. I didn't even, because I, I was, I, w I restricted that day and I, I um, didn't have any cake. I mean, I got some nice dresses, but other than that, it was pretty lame. Um, this birthday was pretty bad because like, sometimes my family make me eat when I didn't want to. And that day I had a pretty big like breakfast and I wasn't hungry when everyone insisted we eat, so um, I refused and then they made me and I was on the verge of tears, which is not normal, but I really wanted a day where it would just go my way. Um, so yeah, that wasn't, a and also my body image was terrible <laughs> again. So after that, I was really resolved. I was really resolved to, well, actually no. Then I had my real, then I had my party and that was like really good day. like one of the best days ever which is funny because it was in the midst of a not so good streak um but after that i was quite resolved to i was quite resolved to restrict and so i did again and this time it was even worse than last time because first of all i was already lean to begin with so then i just went through hell well not hell but i just went through a tough patch for the next few months um i tried I thought that if I distance myself from food, which I thought was the problem, I would feel better. And for a time I did, but it was just, everything just became arduous and tiring. And I wouldn't wake up until like 10 a.m. And I was trying to get out of things all the time, trying to pretend, um, relying on energy drinks. Um, yeah, it was just, and I felt... I th one of my triggers also was I was feeling pretty rejected. If you know me, I feel rejected all the time. It's not anyone's fault. I just feel that way. I can't really help it. Like, I tend to overanalyze social cues to the point where, you know, someone could not say anything. Someone could just breathe and I'd be like, oh my gosh, what have I done? I've done something wrong. Our friendship is ruined. I've caused a rift. Just all this ridiculous assumptions that most of the time aren't true. And so I thought, well... Since no one cares about me, or I'm not perfect, I'll fix myself. It was all about fixing myself and making stuff better. Because ult ultimately my goal is to feel better. I'm not, I don't, I never viewed it as self-destruction. I viewed it as making myself better. I view it as trying to get rid of my insecurities. Replacing, basically replacing my mental struggles with physical struggles so instead of worrying about how i look i'd worried about how i feel and for me that was like a relief i would feel like if i started feeling dizzy i'd be like this is i mean i'm scared i'm gonna die when i go to sleep but that's better than worrying about <laughs> how i look a bit about agonizing over my imperfections literally that's how desperate i was like i seriously needed help um, and I only saw the psychiatrist after that. And I'm not saying that medication will help everyone, but it did for me. Um, cause I always knew that there was something in my brain chemistry that I don't know, malfunctioned or something. And I just fixate on a particular thing, whether it's myself, other people, an aspect in my life. And I find it really hard to let it go. So once I started taking that medication, I um I started to feel better about myself. I started feeling really happy. I started feeling carefree. I started feeling less free, f um, sorry, well, wait, less fearful, sorry. And things were really going uphill for me. I mean, there were some there were some downhill moments. Um, like of course, like when I actually started getting curves back, then I I started panicking and felt really bad. And like I said, sometimes I still do really bad but it happens in like bouts like it happens for a little bit and then it goes away it's really weird um and i did actually start lifting weights for a little bit again but then i just stopped i don't remember when it was like after i made the post saying i quit the gym i did it for a little bit 
again but not for very long i stopped but i don't remember when because i just stopped caring and i just wanted to feel better at that point because you know if you've been doing something for a long while or if you've achieved your goal then you'd be like been there done that i'm sick of it let's move on that's basically what i was feeling and in three months i my weight catapulted and i'm currently the heaviest i've been in four years um when I first stepped on the scale, randomly, I was quite shook. <laughs> I didn't expect to gain this much weight in three months, and now I know why people are kind of surprised. I just didn't really notice that well. Um, it feels very weird, but also not as bad as I thought it would be. Because now I just, like, no lifting weights. I thought my life would be really incomplete without lifting weights, but I was wrong. Like, I don't want to lift weights again. I mean, I'm weak as hell. But I don't care because um, I have so much time for other things now and I feel like fitness is like boring yeah <laughs> no offense to you gym rats out there um I made some reels about what weight gain is like I know a lot of people a lot of you guys may be scared of it but and I would recommend actually only do it if you feel like you can I wouldn't force yourself into doing it because if you're not ready then you won't be happy in the long run you gotta make sure that you're in the right place you have a good support system before you go on this journey um and I know that some of you are forced by your family but that's okay um just go along with it um and try to find ways to cope not bad ways of course healthy ways like starting meditation journaling coloring i don't know all that cliche stuff or watching other people like me to help you get through it it gets it's really uncomfortable at first you will feel so weird you'll feel not yourself like i did but then you'll realize that your weight doesn't define you and you are more than the skinny girl or boy you are you you are a human being and sometimes, and our bodies are always changing. So when I was, uh, I was 10, I used to be skinny, like naturally. And then I just got a bit chubby, but I was healthy. A lot of people think I'm not healthy, each to their own, but I think I am. Like if you have recovered, if I've recovered from amenorrhea, then that means I've done something right. You got to admit, like what's worse, being a bit overweight and still having a period or being underweight and not having a period or being a normal weight and not having Because if you don't have a period then, well technically you're not healthy. So I don't understand why, I think, no offense to my guys out there, but I think it's mostly men who say this stuff because I don't really, I mean, first of all, you're not girls, so you don't really, you might not be educated on what is healthy for a girl. I mean, but if a girl is at a weight that is considered normal by societal standards, but she's still, not all her functions are functioning, then she's probably not healthy. Um, so yeah, just a PSA. <laughs> I don't mean to be condescending. I know not all guys do this. I don't want to offend anybody, but um, yeah. All in all, I'd say I don't regret it because I really wasn't enjoying life. <laughs> Um, and I feel so much better now, like, I'm able to, I have motivation, I have motivation to make this video, um, I have motivation to do things in general, I have motivation to play around. Um, if you haven't already, check out my Instagram for all the cool stuff about recovering, because I want to make it as positive, although realistic, as possible. I don't want to lie, but I also don't want to discourage. Anyway, I would encourage you to do it, to recover. I mean, I mean, it's, you know, YOLO, I guess. I mean, you do look kind of pregnant, but it's normal. I can assure you it's normal. Um, also, be prepared. This might be a bit TMI, but be prepared to go to the toilet multiple times a day.